faces. Huh, didn't see that there. Ah, that's better. Can anybody get away? Some of us got to the age where our arms aren't quite long enough. Yeah, playing trombone, that's good. Well, that's our natural vision. This morning we're going to talk about supernatural vision. The ability to see the impossible. Does God have that ability to see the impossible? Yeah. Because nothing is impossible to him. But when it comes to us, all, we think all kinds of things are not possible, right? Because <laughs> we're human. Well, we're going to talk about that a little bit. We're going to talk about how we all have the same ability that God has. Hmm. But we're going to go to the Old Testament first and start there. Relationship develops vision. In the story that we're going to talk about this morning, we have Elisha and Elijah. Well, we're really only going to talk about Elisha. But we've got to go back to where their relationship started. Elijah was a prophet, and Elisha was called to be his servant. At the time, Elijah was working for his dad. Anybody do chores around the house when they were younger? Do you make your kids do chores around the house? <laughs> All right, good. Well, he was working for his dad, and that was important because their family needed him. Here comes the prophet of God saying, I need for you to come and work for me now. Elisha had a choice to make. Do I stay with my family and do what they expect me to do? What tradition tells me to do? Or do I go and work for the man of God? What do I get out of that? Hmm. If I do what he's calling me to do, it's not him that's going to reward me, but it's God. So he makes the right choice. He follows Elijah. And he's serving them, and they're walking, and they're teaching, and they're going places and doing things. But Elijah needs to test the waters. You don't have to stay with me. You can go. Go back home. But Elijah's like, oh, no. <laughs> You're not cutting me out of my blessing. No way. I'm staying with you. They work a little longer. Now it comes time for Elisha to make his transition from this life. And he tells Elisha, don't stay with me. You don't want to see this. Go back home. Oh, no. I'm staying with you. Because with you, I have my blessing. So, okay. Elisha's taken up. And he drops his mantle. And Elisha picks it up. But Elisha's bold. Because what he has done so far is pretty bold. So he goes to God and he says, I want double portion. Well, what do we have? We have a relationship with God through faith in Jesus Christ. Yes? Amen. So, we've been moved from, as Paul said, servanthood to sonship. That's a little different relationship. You go from waiting tables to sitting at the table. And you now have daddy's authority through the Holy Spirit who's dwelling in all of us. Let me ask you something. Do, do, did you wake up this morning feeling like you had the Holy Spirit walking in you? Really? Who, who did? Okay, we got a couple people in here. The rest of us, yeah, I, I didn't. I woke up, my back hurt, you know, I had to do my makeup, you know. <laughs> Not every morning do we wake up and feel like we're walking in the Holy Spirit. But that doesn't change the reality that it exists, does it? No. Because that's the work of God. He did it. 
Jesus opened that door for us to walk through it. Relationship. We're setting up for that vision. Next slide. Let's go to our story. The man of God sent word to the king of Israel, beware of passing that place because the Arameans are going down there. So the king of Israel checked on the, the place indicated by the man of God. Time and again, Elisha warned the king so that he was on his guard in such places. This enraged the king of Aram. He summoned his officers and demanded of them, tell me, which of us is on the side of the king of Israel? None of us, my lord the king, said one of his officers. But Elisha, the prophet, who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the very words you speak in your bedroom. Now, does everybody feel unnerved by that? He did. <laughs> he thought his plan was secret. Only his people knew what was going on. Let me ask you something. When we ask God to come into our service and come to where we are, does he? Well, let me ask you a question. Was he ever not there? No. In Psalm 139, it says over and over and over again, there's no place you can go and hide from God. Nowhere. Everywhere on the planet, under the planet, in the heavens, everywhere God is. In you is the Holy Spirit where God is. Elisha, at that particular time, had this Holy Spirit put on him like a coat. He didn't live with it in him. So I think we got a little advantage. Yes? Because we have a better covenant. So if this man of God could know and hear from God directly, so can we. But let's see, let's look at this a little bit. It says, time and again, Elisha told them. So they were in a war with Aram. It wasn't one time. It's a couple of times. A few times. This plan kept getting revised over and over and over again. But the king thought it was his private plan. He didn't know God was watching. And God told Elisha, tell the king of Israel what's going to happen. And he responded in kind. Wouldn't that be wonderful if we could do that? Ask God when we get up in the morning, what do I need to do today? How do I address a problem today? How do I plan for my future, Father? Do we do that? Or do we get up in the morning and go, okay, here's my schedule. This is what I have to do. I have to take the kids to school. I gotta go to work. I gotta go shopping. I gotta come home. Do we ask first what we should do and how we should go about doing it? Or do we go after the oops, oh daddy, fix it for me. Am I the only one? <laughs> we do it all the time. But Elisha knew how to tune into God before and get plans on how to address what was coming. So as Christians, in John chapter 16, verse 13, we hear, but when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own. He will speak only what he hears 
and he will tell you what is to come. When we pray, do we pray expecting to hear from God? Or do we expect, well, here's my laundry list. See you. Bye. Prayer is what? Conversation. So we pray, but part of that prayer is hearing what God has to say. He gives us answers. He gives us plans, like he gave Elisha plans. He gave him the enemy's plans. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could thwart the enemy's plan for our lives? Well, we have that same ability that Elijah does. Next slide, please. Vision can be distorted. Your, per your perception can distort your vision. I took off my glasses and I couldn't really see very well. I put on my glasses, I can see much better. What do we see today that distorts our vision? Financial problems? Health issues? Oh, don't turn on the radio or the television. Don't get on the internet. Oh my goodness. When we start to get that churning feeling in our stomach, when you look at those things, our perception is now being distorted because we have taken our eyes off of who? Jesus. We can't not look at that stuff, Leonette. Come on. No. But get your vision straight when you look at it. Because when we look at the circumstances, they will be overwhelming. If your child has a temperature and you don't know how to get it down and you've given the medicine that the doctor has given to you and it's still not going down, what do you do? Do you panic? Oh my God, what am I going to do? Or do you get on your knees before your father and say, I've done what I needed to do in the natural father, the rest is up to you. Do we talk to God that way or do we beg and plead him to do stuff for us? Remember, we have a different position with him now. We are his sons and daughters. We have the inheritance of Jesus Christ. Jesus did not beg God to do stuff. He said, this is what my father says. I'm going to say what he says about the circumstances. And I'm going to watch that word come to pass. That's what we should do. Put the word on it. And not just the word, but believe that God is faithful. We just got finished singing about it. He's faithful to do his word. That brings peace, or at least it should bring peace. When those circumstances jump up in our faces and, oh my goodness, what do I do? Go to God and trust his word to be performed in your life. Well, let's look what happened with Elisha and his servant. Then he, the king of Aaron, sent horses and chariots and a strong force there to Dothan where Elisha was. They went by night and surrounded the city. When the servant of God, the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning, an army was of horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh no, my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. An army? Really? For one guy? What's that really? Oh, come on. A whole city was surrounded by an army for one guy. They didn't even know about the servant. But get this. He's in an army. 
to get the guy who was telling the king of Israel about his plans. Does that make sense? Do you think God, like, I won't tell Elijah about this one. I told him about the other stuff, but I'm not going to tell him about this. God is the most constant thing in the universe. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He told Elisha about Aaron's plan before, and he told him about this one. So, if he told him about it, what is he going to do? Sit back in the cut and let God work. Calm, cool, and collected. How many people want to do that? <laughs> Drew's got both hands up. Yeah. Because when that stuff comes, we're the servant. <gasps> what do I do? Yeah. Why? Because this our flesh. We need to build ourselves up to be like Elisha. Calm, cool, and collected. Okay. But let's look at somebody else that had a similar situation. This guy called Jesus. When they came to arrest him, they came with 600 armed men. Now, if Jesus was such a threat, one guy, 600 people, it's a lot. We'll overkill. But this scripture not only talks about them coming to arrest him, but it's talks about what he did in response to them coming to arrest him. He said two words. I am. And all 600 guys hit the ground. <laughs> now we look at that and go, well that was just Jesus. No. What Jesus had we have been invested with the same Holy Spirit. Have we talked to our situation the way he did? You know, we sing lovely songs. He could have sent 10,000 angels. He didn't need them. Two words. I am done. Go to Book of Revelations that Pastor Matt taught last January. When he comes back, guess what? On his thighs are I am. He doesn't even have to say it. It's just on him and it's done. What about us? When we see our circumstances, do we tell our circumstances who we are? Do we walk in the authority that God has put in us? We have been given God's righteousness when you show up the devil ought to get nervous when you pray everything should change not because I have prayed but because my relationship with the father has changed and he has promised it it's not based on us it's based on him and his authority that he's invested in us. In the scriptures it talks about if you have the faith of a mustard seed. Well, that's great. But a mustard seed can only produce when what happens? When it's planted. Only when it's planted and it starts to what? Grow. When it grows, then you say to that mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea. Plant the seed, let it grow through your relationship and feeding on the word of God. Then you speak to that circumstance and it has to move. Say it expecting God to do it because he promised to do it. Don't speak to it. It's going to stand there. If you, what? Don't pray, you don't get. You pray and miss, 
guess what? Same result. You still don't get it. Look at it and speak to it. Don't be intimidated by what you see, but see into the spirit realm, supernatural vision, that you have the authority through Christ to speak to that situation and watch God work. Has anybody ever done that? Time and time again. We've prayed prayers and we've watched God work. Because he promised himself to us that he will be that faithful to us. Let's go to the next slide. Two, three words. Don't be afraid. How often have we heard Jesus say that? Don't fear. Don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. Don't. Do what ha why does that keep coming up over and over and over again? Because we get afraid. Circumstances come up and we go, huh, how do I deal with this? Money, children, husbands, wives, politics, the school, my job. What do I do? How do I handle it? Our knees buckle under the weight of it all. Because our perception is off. So God has to remind us, don't be afraid. Now here, the prophet is saying this to his servant because his servant has stretched out on the floor and has had a panic attack. Ah, there's an army out there, what do we do? And this is the line that we all should be saying. Those who are with us are more than those that are with them. Can everybody say that with me? Those that are with us are more than those that are with them. When that thing jumps up in your face, the big bad boogeyman, I want you to say that. Those that are with us are more than those that are with them. See, when you look into the circumstances, it's huge. But when you look with your spiritual vision at God's provision, there's more. I mean, to get to you, they got to go through Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and God to get to you. Oh, and according to Psalm 91, a whole host of angels that he has given charge over you. Has anybody seen an angel lately? It only takes one. You got a whole host with you? What I do for a living, I have to go to places that are not desirable, okay? I'm a fraud investigator. I got to go to prisons. I got to go in neighborhoods that even angels may not dare go. You okay? But I go with the people say, well, you're a woman. So I go with my host of angels with the confidence that I know, one, the Holy Spirit is in me. So he will let me know, don't go there. And I won't. But if I don't hear anything, coast is clear. Come on, angels, let's go. We ought to have that relationship daily with God. Do I go? Don't I go? Do I take this trip? Don't I take this trip? The whole world is falling apart because China has a virus. The Holy Ghost will tell you, don't go. Before it hits the news wave. Hello? But if we don't develop that relationship to know there's more with us than there are with them. We gotta know it. And he prays a very simple prayer. And it's, it's not long, it's not lengthy, there are no vows and whoever's. Lord, he says, open his eyes 
Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, the God of promise, so that he may see. How simple is that? Just like that, God says, okay. He looked and he saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire around Elisha. He got to see into the spirit realm to see who came to his defense. There's not enough room in this church for everybody's host to come in here. That's how many you have. Each and every one of you. Do you know that? Now you do. I want you to walk out of here and expect that that host is always with you. Because God called it to be. Elisha knew it. He didn't have to pray for himself. He had to pray for his servant because his servant looked at the circumstances. He already knew. So we're going to pray a little later for you to have that same vision. To see, to hear, to be attentive to what God has for you, has provided for you, how to live day to day makes a difference Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18 I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope which is he has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance and holy people we are the holy people that have now been given the inheritance of Jesus Christ. Walk in that. Be expectant of God to do what he did in Jesus' life, in Elisha's life, in your lives. Because he's given that to you already. Walk in it. Live it. Next slide. We're going to come to the altar and we're going to seek God's face for this. For God to open up our eyes to have our understanding the very essence of who we are constantly aware of Him. Constantly aware of who we are in Him. The righteousness of God in Christ. Not everybody can say that. But if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can make that proclamation. You don't have to go in the streets and yell it, but you need to remind little Demi over there who you are, because he's going to ask. With everything that he throws up in your face, that's the question. Who are you? And what is your answer going to be? I am a child of the most high God I have what he says I have I can do what he says I can do and you have to flee Jesus told him get thee hence and we're going to have to do the same thing get thee hence because I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ are you? Are you? More than a conqueror. That means he doesn't get to win. Not at all. But we have to do what this song says. Focus your eyes on Jesus. 